Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last couple of lectures, we saw the role of data simulation and its importance to predictive science. Prediction is forecast. We also saw yesterday that not all processes can be predicted accurately. Some can be done rather precisely. In many cases, forecast will not be perfect. An imperfect forecast is said to have errors. So, we are going to talk today's lecture with a good classification of forecast errors because this classification will help us how do we attack the problem of correcting forecast errors using data simulation and it will also tell us what kind of errors need what type of tools to be able to correct them in order to be able to make the forecast better. So, today's emphasis is going to be a classification of forecast errors and I would like to remind the reader that forecasting is fundamental aim of data simulation and forecast errors are inherent in every forecast. In order to be able to correct the error we need to have a handle on the classification of errors. To do that I am going to start with the relation between the truth and the observation. The truth is the true state of mother nature. Observations are data obtained through sensing the mother nature's true state. So, let us assume x star is a vector be the unknown true state of the system under observation. For example, today's temperature in the city of London that is a true state of the mother nature, but we are going to observe the true state. So, z is called the observation. Observation in general is a m vector true state is a n vector. The observation and the true state are related through a fundamental uh, mathematical expression z is equal to h of x star and uh, v uh, plus v here v is the observation noise. In the nonlinear case z is equal to h of x star plus v h is a nonlinear function. So, observation may be related linearly to the true state or observation can be related to uh, the true state nonlinearly. In either case there are going to be errors correcting the observation. We are assuming the errors are additive in nature that is a simple way of dealing with observational errors and this aspect of considering observa observational errors being an additive process has been around ever since the days of Gauss that we talked about in the last class. So, you can readily see if you want to know the true state of mother nature you can only sense it through devices. The devices output the z the input to the devices are the x stars. So, z contains information about the true state of mother nature x star, but it is corrupt by, corrupted by additive noise. So, we we say z contains the information modulo the observation noise v. This observation noise is in general unavoidable. It is also unobservable. In what sense? We may not we will not be able to separate h of x star or h of x star from z. If we are able to x, uh, uh, separate h of x star or, uh, 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 from z we are able to have a filter that will filter out the noise in general such filtering is not easy to develop because we may not know very precisely 
all the properties of, 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 of the noise we generally assume it is Gaussian uh, distributed it is also white and so on. So, if you want to know the true state of mother nature you have to observe her uh, evolution observation contains the secrets about mother nature and that is not unusual. When you feel not too well you go to the doctor the doctor wants to be able to estimate your true state of the physical system. The true state of the physical systems are obtained by making observation blood pressure, temperature, um, various kinds of tests and so on. So, observations are indicators of the underlying true state of any system be it human or nature. Now, let us pull the other one we have talked about model what are model? Models represent abstractions of reality. Models represent our understanding of how mother nature works. It reflects our cumulative understanding of the working of the system. Interest in model stems from it must be stems from not systems I am sorry stems from the fact that the forecast product are generated from model state or solutions. So, to do forecast models are necessary models represent our understanding of the mother nature. Our understanding of the mother nature sometimes closer to being perfect sometimes may not be perfect. A model and its solution in general depend on number of factors pertinent to the behavior of the system being modeled. We have already talked about the role of parameters in, 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 in models and so on. So, now here comes the, the, the two facets the reality as it is our sense of our, our sensing of reality in terms of observation models represent our understanding of how reality probably works and and there is probably a gap between the two. It is this gap between the actual reality and our understanding of how reality works leads to forecast errors. If the model is perfect the forecast are perfect if the model and the reality if there is a gap that gap reflects in the form of forecast errors. Now, I would like to be able to classify the presence of this gap between our understanding of reality and the actual reality itself. To emphasize the intrinsic dependence of model solution on various factors. So, we have already seen if it is the dynamic model the model de a solution depends on the initial condition parameters boundary conditions. So, the model solutions are contingent on the value that we assign to these uh, uh, variables. Because these variables control the model solution anybody who has done anything in differential equation knows the differential equation solution. I have a general solution you get a particular solution by specializing the initial conditions. If you change the initial condition the solution changes. So, changing the initial condition changes the solution in other words initial condition controls the evolution of the solution changing the parameters controls the evolution of the solution. So, anything that can change the model solution is called a control variable. So, control in principle refers to all the factors collectively that affects the evolution of the model solution be static dynamic model. Let us see refers to a subset of R L R L L is a integer R L is a space of real vectors of size n. I am assuming C is a subset of R L that means any vector C belonging to script C is the control vector of dimension L sort of the real number of control. In general L C is called the control space every point in the control space corresponds to one solution of the model if you change the control vector that is the, the model solution changes. So, ultimately the behavior of the forecast depends on the value of the control that we use and I would like to quickly remind that the control consists of initial condition boundary condition parameters anything that is part of the model if I change any one of these factors if the solution changes I call it control. In static model the control represents only the physical parameters. In a static model there is no initial condition there is no boundary condition it is a bunch of parameters and, 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 and that is all. So, in that case 
the parameters we call it alpha. Alpha is a p vector in this case the L is equal to p the control space is essentially parameter space. In general I want you to remember the parameter space is only a subset of the control space the control space consists of initial condition boundary conditions and parameters but parameter set, a parameter set is a subset of all the controls. So, in the static model there is no initial condition there is no boundary condition simply parameters. In the dynamic model is the it is this the control is a union of parameters initial condition boundary conditions. So, L is equal to p plus n plus q where is p coming from p is the number of parameters n is the number of initial condition q is the number of boundary condition. So, L is equal to p plus n plus q in nonlinear differential equation there is a branch called bifurcation analysis in bifurcation analysis c represents the parameter space. The bifurcation analysis depends on variation of the behavior with respect to variation of parameters in the parameter space. So, as c varies in script c we get different instantiations of the model anybody who knows differential equation knows that if the initial condition changes it represents a different model if the parameter changes it represents a different model. So, each model within a class so for a particular choice of the parameters we call it an instant of that model the instant being picked by the values of the control. The set C in a sense denotes the set of all models. So, from a model now we are considering not one model a class of models. So, in general in science a model does not mean one model a model means a class of model when we say primitive equation model primitive equation model is not one, but it is an infinite collection of models. Barotropic vorticity equation model is not one, but the collection model shallow water model likewise. Same thing with respect to harmonic oscillator harmonic oscillator is a very generic thing the frequency if you change it the model changes initial condition changes it changes if you add a friction it changes if you add a forcing it changes. So, by model we always mean an infinite class I have to pick pick from this infinite class a particular model that can be utilized the picking of the particular model from the class is done by specifying the values of the control the control consists of parameters initial condition boundary condition whatever applies whether it is dynamic or static. So, now with this as a background I am now going to define a classification of forecast errors let us see be <coughs> in instance of the model. So, in other words I am representing a model by the choice of the control vector. So, if c is a control vector x c let us denote the solution as c varies x c varies. So, define z superscript m z superscript m. So, what does this mean x c is the model output h is the operator z f m is the model counterpart of the observation z f m the nonlinear case model counterpart of the observation. Now, I would like to distinguish between model counterpart or model predicted observation from the actual observation z is the actual observation comes from the meter that I read satellite radar voltmeter and meter whatever it is. But if I know the state if I know h I can also predict what the model predicted observation ought to be. So, there are two versions of the observation the actual observation the model predicted observation. So, let c star be the c such that x of c star is x star the true state. If I assume the model is perfect my model includes a perfect model a perfect model has to be parameterized let c star be the parameter that gives me the perfect model. I do not know what c star is, but I am assuming such a c star exists if your modeling is, is good such a c star exists that is no question about the existence of that. So, this is where the whole thing lies there is a c star that corresponds to the true state of nature the model matches the mother nature, but there is a c I have picked the c may not be c star if the c is not equal to c star the x of c is not equal to x of c star x of c star corresponds to the true state of nature x of c is the state predicted by the model that corresponds to the parameter c and these two in general need not be the same and that is where fundamentally 
forecast errors arise. So, the forecast error now can be defined as error in the model induced by the control vector C EFC is equal to Z super amp what is that that is the model counterpart of the error which is generated by Z. The Z without any superscript that is the true state of mother nature. The difference between the two is what I just talked about what the model sees what the mother nature has the difference between the two is called the forecast error. So, the forecast error now has a description Z m is H of x e Z is equal to H of x star plus V. So, the you get this following equation 3 the first term I am going to call it B of C comma C star minus V V is the observation noise. What is this B? B is the deterministic part of the forecast error. So, the forecast error consists of two parts one due to the unavoidable unobservable random error V the second one the deterministic part which is which arises largely because of my inadequate knowledge about what mother nature does she uses C star I use C if C is not equal to C star there is going to be a bias. So, you can think of B as a bias in the in the forecast the bias is a function of C and C star. So, this is the general framework in other words the forecast error always consists of two parts a deterministic part and a random part. I also want to quickly add random part we cannot touch it we cannot annihilate the random part random part stays with the observation. So, what is the best you can do if you want to be able to reduce the forecast error the only thing that you can do is to hope to annihilate B. If you can annihilate B then you will be left only with a random error which is uncontrollable. So, what is the basic idea of forecast error classification I would like to be able to understand what part of the forecast error I can control was part of the forecast error I cannot control we can only deal with things that I can control over do not worry about things that you have no control over. So, the operation of the forecast error into deterministic part and the stochastic part is very helpful in trying to design schemes for correcting forecast errors that is the motivation for this. So, given EFC now please go back EFC is given by equation 3. B. So, you can think of E is equal to B minus V. So, given EFC so what is that we would like to be able to do what is the concept of forecast error control there is C star. So, we have talked about separation of forecast errors into deterministic part and the random part. Now, we are going to look at a classification of forecast errors. We know E c is the forecast error E c. So, what is the basic idea here is a c using c I am going to generate a solution I am going to get a forecast let us say x k or I, I will simply say x of c x of c but I have x star which is the unknown true state x star is different from x c. So, the question is how do I change x c to x star we all know x star depends on c star. So, the only way to move x c to x star is to change c to c star and that can be done by adding a perturbation delta c uh, that is what is being talked about in here. So, if you want to be able to annihilate the 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 error you have to be able to you have to be able to change the control you have to add a correction delta c to c 
and if c plus delta c is equal to c star it will become h of c x of c star and that will be the true system or the true state and z represents the truth. So, the truth minus truth will cancel itself and v is the uncontrollable unavoidable noise in which case this is purely random. So, if you look at fundamentally how do we can improve the quality of the forecast here lies the solution. The only way to be able to improve the quality of forecast is to find an increment delta c to the control which an added to the control c will annihilate the deterministic part of the forecast error. That is the fundamental uh, 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 relation that one needs to bear. So, this can be vectorially represented like this. So, the control space C represent the current belief about the model C star is the unknown truth. If I use the C I have picked a model X of C. If I picked X of C, X of C gives me the observation Z of M, but C star has X star that gives observation Z. So, how do I how do I minimize the difference between Z and C star? In order to be able to minimize the difference between Z and C star, I should be able to minimize the difference between C and C star that is where the control lies. So, I, what is the increment I should add to the control? in order to force x c closer to x star which will in turn make z closer to z m. So, this pictorial view is the basis for classification of forecast errors. So, as c so look at this mathematically now as c tends towards c star x of c will tend towards x star which will then imply z of m will tend towards z. When z of m tend towards z means what? my model reflects mother nature. My model reflects mother nature I cannot do any different I'm any better than that. So, this picture essentially tells you how one can hope to control the forecast error largely due to the difference between the model forecast and the true state of the system. So, with that as a basis now I am going to provide the actual classification we, we, we have been talking about case 1. In this case model is perfect. Model is perfect means I have thorough understanding of mother nature, but I did not pick my c to be equal to c star. I, I may have a total understanding of the process, but I may not know the initial state of the mother nature. So, c is not equal to c star. So, in this case the forecast error is largely due to the incorrect control the model is capable of replicating mother nature, but I did not know the actual parameter mother nature uses. I only guess that c is my guess c star is her choice. The difference between c and c star is going to reflect this difference between c and c star um, uh, uh, reflects the, 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 the forecast error. So, E of c in this case be c c star minus v. Almost all the standard formulations of data simulation problem for deterministic static and dynamic models are of this type. So, what is that we assume? We assume my model is perfect. Let us talk about that for a moment now. No modeler believes that model is not correct because if it is not correct he would not use it. So, if I am going to use a barotropic vorticity equation to be able to describe the hurricane, scientists know that it captures 90 95 percent of reality is very close to being perfect. If it does not if, if, if a scientist does not have that confidence in the model they would not use it. So, much of the development in the forecast literature fall into this category namely models are perfect. We assume the models to be perfect. Even the perfect model if there is going to be a forecast error is largely due to the difference in control. If there is a forecast error big only because c is not equal to c star I have the ability to be able to change the control thereby force the forecast error to be purely random. So, most of the standard formulations of data simulation falls in the category the well known 3D war 4D war forward sensitivity method nudging are all some of the examples of methods used 
to do data simulation fall under this category. Case 2 this is a much more difficult case the model is imperfect. If the so if the model is imperfect and my control is not the same. So, there is two kinds of errors one coming from the not model not being perfect another coming from the fact the control is not perfect. So, there are two types of errors that are confounded it is very these confounded errors are very difficult to separate we cannot say this part of the error is due to this is this part of the error due to this. This confounding is 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 is, is a large headache. The forecast error is the confounding of the model error and the control error. In this case we need much more powerful techniques and this is the most difficult case that one can deal with. This case can be handled in one of many ways depending on how one wants to postulate the correction to the model error efficiency. In other words you have to want to correct the model error in a particular way the way that you would like to be able to correct the model error will dictate the method by which you are going to correct the forecast error. So, this view of data simulation as a forecast error correction was proposed in a paper by Lakshmi Varahan and Lewis in 2010. It is the basis for the paper forward sensitivity based approach to dynamic data simulation these three error classifications have been the subject of this paper and the forward sensitivity method we had proposed is one of the methods by which we can correct model errors as in case 1. With that we have concluded analysis of classification of forecast errors. Thank you.